All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking on beyond this hour, where the Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has accused the State of Israel or the assassination of its top nuclear scientist, Mohsin Fakhrizadeh. Hassan Rouhani accused Israel of acting as a mercenary for the United States in carrying out the assassination. The Fakhrizadeh is known as the father of Iran's nuclear weapons program, and he was assassinated via a shootout that the Iranians are describing was carried out by the Israelis just outside the capital of Tehran. The Iran state media has reported that the scientist was targeted at the Absad city just outside of Tehran and the assailants reportedly detonated an explosion, making him stop his car before resorting to a shootout resulting in his death. The images from the scene showed a black sedan on the side of its road its windshield pockmarked with bullet holes. And also Iran's Morning. Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif has condemned the assassination as an act of state-sponsored terror. In a tweet, Mohammad Javad Zarif has claimed that there were some serious indications of an Israeli role behind the assassination of the nuclear scientist. Now, Iran has warned of severe consequences. As the eminent Iranian scientist was murdered, Zarif wrote in his, on his Twitter handle, and I quote him here, This covetous with serious indications of Israeli role shows desperate warmongering by the perpetrators of this attack. He's also called on the international community to end their shameful double standards and condemn this act of state-sponsored terror by Israel. Though the details about the slay slaying still remain slim, Iran's defense minister, General Amir Hatami, has said that a car that was carrying Fakhrizadeh was shot at before a pickup truck that was loaded with explosives blew up near the vehicle, isn't it? Chun, امروز در یک سفر در اطراف تهران مورد یک عملیات تروریستی قرار گرفتند و تیم حفاظت ایشون که همراه ایشون بودند در این عملیات درگیر شدند و متاسفانه ایشون زخم برداشتن و با شدت جراحات به بیمارستان منتقل شدن البته دو نفر از همراهان ایشون هم مجروح شدن در این حادثه متاسفانه کار تیم پزشکی به نتیجه نرسید و ایشون به شهادت چون معاون وزیر دفاع و رئیس سازمان پژوهش و نوآوری های دفاعی کشور بودند دارای یک وجهه علمی بالا و سابقه طولانی در نوآوری های دفاعی کشور هستند شاگردان بسیار زیادی رو تربیت کردن پرورش دادن کارهای ایشون در حوزه دفاعی کارهای بزرگ و پرثمری است Alright now to get us more insight in terms of what all of this means for the region at last we're joined in by Mr Arsen Ostrovsky who is an international human rights lawyer and also a political analyst is joining us live from Tel Aviv uh, Mr. Ostrovsky, let me begin by asking you this. This is a very high-profile assassination that has taken place just on the outskirts of Tehran. And Iran accuses Israel of having carried out this assassination. What do you make of this? Look, I mean, Iran always accuses Israel uh, immediately. It's become a reflexive uh, step, uh, not only in Iran, but uh, in uh, many parts of the West as well. But I think something we need to remember is that at this point, there certainly hasn't been any verifiable evidence to the fact and uh, Israel or, or any party for that matter has uh, claimed any kind of uh, responsibility for this attack. At the end of the day, we should bear in mind that uh, uh, Fakhrizadeh was uh, the godfather of the Iranian uh, nuclear uh, weapons program. Um, it's a program that only threatened Israel's very existence but also uh, many countries in the region and beyond. So he certainly uh, did not have uh, any shortage of enemies or uh, parties and activists with a vested interest in stopping the Iran nuclear program. Is that this is quite clearly an attack that has taken place on the outskirts of Tehran. And it also says that on the 30th of April in the year 2018, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had specifically named Mohsin uh, the scientist here and he had said that remember this name and now this man has been assassinated and and now israel you're saying at this point of time has not come forth and issued any statement on this issue correct israel has not issued any kind of statement at all and to the best of my knowledge nor has uh, any party taken any kind of claim or responsibility for it and again i would 
Red Raid, but of course Israel was very familiar with his uh, work. Um, this is someone who was uh, very much uh, the godfather of the Iranian nuclear weapons program, someone that was, uh, the, I suppose, played an intricate role in developing it, both covertly and within the Iranian defense, uh, uh, defense ministry. So he was a very prominent, very well-known individual, uh, but certainly not one um, that had a shortage of enemies or or parties uh, who felt threatened by a, the expansive Iranian weapons program that uh, felt the need to perhaps uh, put a stop for it. Uh, but certainly there hasn't been any uh, kind of evidence uh, corroborating that Israel was in any way involved and certainly no responsibility claimed by Israel at this stage. All right, now this is the second high-profile assassination that has taken place of such an important Iranian official. The first one was that of Qasem Soleimani that took place earlier in the year. Uh, do you see any kind of a reaction from Iran after the assassination of such a top nuclear scientist of Iran? Do you think they would like to respond to this? Look, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, you know, in the space of now less than a year, uh, Iran has seen both the Soleimani, the terror chief and head of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, and now the head of the nuclear weapons program, both eliminated in less, uh, in less than a year. So this is a monumental um, embarrassment and I think blow to, uh, to the Iranian regime. Um, how they respond will need to be seen. I suspect that Iranians who have now, of course, and I think quite seemingly been embarrassed by this uh, latest uh, intelligence breach, will have to be, uh, will have to take some kind of action in response in order not to be seen as uh, losing uh, more faith than they already have. The question is how much, given, uh, given that there's an incoming Biden administration about to enter in, uh, in January, how much they will seek to want to aggravate that. Um, I suspect that you will see some uh, minimal actions, perhaps against either American or perhaps uh, Amer against American um, military interest in the region or a cross-border attack possibly against Israel on the Syrian or Lebanese uh, border. Uh, but I do not expect that Iran would take a major drastic step at this stage because, again, they are looking at a new administration in the U.S. and hopefully a re-engagement on the JCPOA uh, nuclear deal. So they will want to be very mindful in terms of uh, how, if they respond at all. Just before we let you go, Mr. Ostrovsky, uh, the Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has accused Israel of carrying out this assassination. He's in fact gone on to the extent of stating that Israel is acting as a mercenary for the United States in having carried out this assassination. Uh, do you think Israel will in fact condemn this assassination? I'm sorry, I missed your question. My question was, will Israel condemn this, is, this assassination? I don't know. I don't and speak for the Israeli government, uh, there certainly won't be any, uh, any tears uh, shed for this man who led a program that, um, whose ultimate aim was the elimination of the very state of Israel. Um, I don't think you will see any kind of uh, response from Israel on this. Um, and uh, we'll have to wait and see. But at this stage, I don't think there will be any mourning of this man who uh, stopped the Iranian program uh, to state destruction. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Az. Arsen Ostrovsky for joining us and getting us all those insights into the Israeli view of this incident. Let's now shift our attention to the other big story that we are tracking on Beyond, where the trilateral maritime